you doing guys today we are going to install the piston and the rod in my Magnum 16 uh, first off I guess we'll start off with the parts that are going to be needed I have my Kerber billet rod the bearing inserts that go with that rod I also have a stock NOS heavy-duty Kohler rod here on the right side just for comparison purposes and I'll get to that in just a second I also have my NOS piston uh, standard size um, that's the pin that came with the piston as well as the new pin clips which are still here in the bag I'm not using a set of standard rings I'm using I bought a set of 10 over Kohler rings or NOS rings and then I end gapped them to all the cast iron rings that come in the kit have been uh, end gap to 15 thousandths which is right in the middle between the factory setting of 10 to 20 and like there's the little steel retaining rings that or I should say the steel uh, rings that come with the kit they're the real thin ones I'll show you those in a few and this one I end gap to 16 then we had 18 and 15 on those on the uh, oil control ring or the bottom ring and I'll get to that in a second so in general in one of my in the parts video that i uploaded a few weeks ago i had indicated that the kerber rod the billet rod is actually designed for the old style k-series piston so if you want to run it on a magnum piston the end of the rod has to be machined to fit in the piston itself um, essentially to fit in that piston like that and have the appropriate clearance now what I did was I machined this rod to and here's where the comparison comes into play I just machined it down to a stock I'm just gonna lean this up real quick let's see if we can get that to lean up it won't because I because I uh, need to do it with one hand oh there we go it's good enough okay so what I did was I actually machined down the the Kerber billet rod to stock Kohler end or you know the small end diameter or the width of the rod itself so let me show you how I did that I'll give you a, a little comparison of the measurement before and after and we'll be right back to put this together So as you can see, that was just a pretty simple machining job. It really wasn't that technical. I just made sure that I took an even amount off either side of the rod in order to get it to the sizing that I need. So before we go through the parts roughly, let's just go over some of the tools that are going to be required. Um, a ring expander or ring installer tool, cheap, six bucks. Um, we have a ring compressor. It's in the bag because I need to clean it and we're going to need some fresh oil. This is straight 30, uh, 30 weight from Rotella or Shell Rotella oil that I'm just going to use to do the uh, initial assembly. Also going to need some assembly lube, which I have right there. Uh, what else are we going to need? Oh, paper towels to make sure everything is clean because we've got to clean everything squeaky clean, front to back, left to right, um, in the lands and the everything. Everything needs to be cleaned. Going to uh, make sure you clean your bolts. Uh, for the Ker Kerber rod, um, sometimes there's a little bit of aluminum inside the threads. I just clean them with some brake cleaner, a paper towel, and a toothbrush just to make sure it's good and clean. One thing to keep in mind, if you look at the washers that come with the kit, or the Kerber kit, um, the washer has like a, let's see if we can get this thing to focus a little bit over here for you. Uh, let's see, come on. You can see, oh, there it is. You can see there's a bevel side on the inside of that washer. And then there's this side of the washer is at 90 degrees. It, there's no bevel, okay? And the reason for that is this. The bolt head, okay, has like a little round edge at the base of the flange, okay? So with that, you want to make sure that the beveled side of the washer goes towards the head of the bolt 
and the flat side of the washer goes towards the cap. Now, when you're orienting the piston on the rod, it does, there is something that we need to take into account for. The notch in the piston goes towards the flywheel. That's how it is on the on a Magnum motor and some K-series motors. Um, so you gotta make sure that the piston is, oops, is uh, dropped into the bore correctly. We have to, with that being said, we have to be mindful that the oil hole in the cap of the rod has to be towards the camshaft because the camshaft rotates in the opposite direction of the crankshaft and slings oil onto the cap, thus oiling the bearing. So in order to make sure that I keep it straight, what I do is I just take a Sharpie marker and I just make a little dot on the parts, the cap and the rod. So that way when I orient this, I know that this is the flywheel side of the rod, the flywheel side of the cap, and that this is notch is towards the flywheel. So essentially, if we take this cap and I take my dot, which is going to be towards the flywheel, my oil hole is towards the camshaft. And then when I put the rod on the piston itself, I'll make sure that this dot is in line or on the same side of the piston as the notch. Obviously, got to clean everything, um, which I already have. Um, I got to take these out, clean them. I cleaned the rings already. Obviously, as I indicated, I end gapped them all set already. Um, so I just got to install those on, um, put the pin, lubricate everything up, and then we'll get ready to put it in the in the bore itself or into the block. One thing to keep in mind: if you use a stock rod, same exact theory uh, falls into play. In other words, that oil hole in the stock rod has to go towards the camshaft. So in other words, this thing needs to be oriented in this place, in this position, I should say. And I would do the exact same thing. I'll just take a Sharpie marker, make a dot on the rod. So that way, when I put it on the piston, it's all oriented correctly. All right. So let's, let's get some stuff together. Okay, so I got the uh, the rings on the piston. I just used the diagrams that were on the envelopes uh, for the rings. Started off with the lower ring, the oil control, the next, the scraper ring, and then the compression ring. Put everything together. Went a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. <laughs> I don't know why I was having a, I was having a problem getting those on. I went upstairs and got an old Chinese food. Uh, little bucket here and the reason for that is once I start to oil these rings up and put the rod in and put the assembly lube I just find that those things work pretty good just to control the mess factor um, I did put the bearing shell for the rod not the cap the rod back in the rod so that way when I install it in the block that cap or this bearing shell is at least in place and I don't have to kind of try to finagle that thing in there with the crank in the way. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to clean my uh, pin clips. I'll just put those in with a set of needle nose pliers real carefully. I am going to get some, I'm going to use actual assembly lube on the inside of the, the pin area, the inside of the rod, all over the pin itself and slide that all together, put my clips into place. Then next, I will take 30 weight oil. I will be spreading it all over the rings. I'll be twisting the rings um, around to make sure I get the oil everywhere in the ring itself, the, the lands between all the rings, everything. And then I'll orient the gaps so none of them align or, or none of them are in uh, perfect alignment. The next thing, the other thing too is the notch, I'm actually dropping the notch towards the flywheel. So that way, this is oriented that way. This, I know my black dot has to be oriented towards the flywheel also. So all my markings are pointing in the right direction. All right, let me get this together and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I have the rod on the piston. I put uh, assembly lube on the inside of the little end of the rod. I put assembly lube on the inside of the piston uh, pin areas. I also coated the pin with assembly lube. 
and then I slid it all together. I made sure everything moves nice and smooth, side to side, and I don't, yeah, back and forth. So that way that I know it's well lubricated. I buttered both sides of everything. So that way we have a nice uh, coating of assembly lube on that area. The next thing I did, and that's because, uh, hang on real quick, sorry. There it is, the oil's got it stuck. I liberally, I mean, I pumped a ton of oil 30 weight oil all over the rings. I spun the rings around. I slid them back and forth, made sure that oil got throughout the rings. And then I staggered the end gaps so none of them are lined up with each other. What I'm going to do next is I am going to clean out the bore, wipe it out really, really well with some brake cleaner and a paper towel. And then I'm going to oil it all up, get it all oiled up real nice. I'm going to clean my ring compressor. I'm going to ring compress everything together so that way it's ready to go into the bore. Oh, should say I made sure that my dots and the notch and the piston all line up so that way we won't have any uh, alignment issue. And then we're going to drop it into the bore. And when I drop it in the bore, I will be mindful of where the journal is and the weight so that way we don't I don't drop the rod onto the crank in an area number one I don't want to go and number two that's going to damage either part. Okay, so we got the piston in the bore because you can see the uh, the rod is right there. And deep down inside there, there's the piston. Um, it seemed to go in just fine. Just made sure that the ring compressor was solidly pushed against the deck of the block. And then I just used the end, that end of my uh, dead blow hammer to just kind of tap it a couple times and give it a good push. And it went right in. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the journal very well. Make sure that's the last cleaning is real good. Make sure that bearing is nice and clean. Then I'm going to take some assembly lube, pour it on the, the bearing shell, smear, smooth, smear it around with my finger. Also the same with the uh, journal. And then I'm going to bring the piston to meet the journal. And there we go. The rod and the piston are in. I torque the bolts to the directions of the Kerber rod, which is oil on the threads and on the washers, and torqued to 28 to 30 foot-pounds. Um, I did it to 29 foot-pounds. I did have to put the bolts in the rod just to twist it a little bit so it would line up with the journal, but all in all, it was a clean install. Everything seems to be in place. Now, I didn't put the ice pick dipper on the rod yet. I will do that. Um, once I get the oil pan uh, on it, it is one of the shallow oil pans. So I just want to make sure that that dipper is not going to hit the oil pan in general once the engine starts. So I'll do that measurement. And if I have to trim the dipper a little bit, I will. Um, all this will get oiled once I put the oil, just before I put the oil pan on. So I'll dribble and pour uh, 30 weight oil all over all the gears and in the bearings and everything. Uh, all over the place and down into the governor area to pre-lubricate that. And then I'll put the oil pan on it and button it all up. But for now, there it is. Piston and rod, rings, they're all in the bore. You know what, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the motor over so you can see it from the top first. And there we go. This is the top side install. If we look around the bore itself... There's no scratches, there's no dings, um, so that leads me to believe that the rings went in nice and smooth without any issue. The chamfer is nice and clean, and when I'm talking about the chamfer, I mean this. So it doesn't look like any of the rings clipped the edge or anything like that when it went in. And we have the notch towards the flywheel, we have the oil hole on the uh, uh, cap rod cap pointing towards the camshaft so with that this install is done all right hope you found that interesting thank you very much for watching if you liked the video or if you found any one or two of the little tips that i did um helpful or maybe possibly you would think about doing yourself please give it a thumbs up and as always Please subscribe and, you know, if you want to share this with a friend either to say what a good job or this guy doesn't know what he's doing, either way, please subscribe, please share, 
And as always, thank you for your support. Have a great day.